Hi everyone, I'm Wyatt and welcome back to our FRC Java tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at a special type of method called the constructor, as well as learning about if, else, if, else statements. Much like last time, we'll start off by creating a new replit project. This time, we'll be making a squirrel in order to demonstrate today's concepts. As always, we'll start off by creating a new file called squirrel.java. And we'll type in public class squirrel. This time, we'll be using three instance variables to keep track of our squirrel class. An integer called numacorns that will represent the number of acorns this squirrel has. A boolean called is hungry to represent whether or not the squirrel is hungry, and a string called name to represent the squirrel's name. A boolean is a type of variable that can have two values, true or false, and a string is a type of variable we use to represent any sequence of characters. Next, we're going to create our first constructor. A constructor is a special type of method that runs once, once a new object is created. Typically, it is used to initialize our instance variables. If we don't initialize our instance variables in a constructor, they are usually set to default values, integers to zero, booleans to false, and strings and other objects to null. This is usually not what we want, so that's why we make constructors. To create a constructor, we simply write public followed by the class name. We never give a constructor a return type, not even void. It's this special syntax that lets the compiler know that this is a constructor and should be called once the, a new object is created. Next, we'll give the constructor some parameters, and we'll use those parameters to assign the values passed into the method to the instance variables. Next, we're going to create a method where the squirrel decides to do something. It will decide what to do based on the number of acorns it has and whether or not it is hungry. To do this, we will be using an if, else, if, and else statement. We'll call this method act, and it will have a void return type. First, we'll check if the squirrel has acorns. To do this, we will simply write if this.numacorns is less than or equal to zero. This.numacorns less than or equal to zero is a statement that will give us a boolean, true if numacorns is less than or equal to zero, or false if it is not. The block of code will run if the boolean it receives is true. So, if the squirrel does have zero acorns, it will go and search for an acorn, and its acorn count will increase by one. We'll print this to the terminal. Next, to check if the squirrel is hungry, we'll write else if this dot is hungry. Since is hungry is already a boolean, we just have to put it in this else if statement. If is hungry is true, this block of code will run. If the squirrel is hungry, it will eat one of its acorns, and its number of acorns will decrease by one. Additionally, we'll set this dot is hungry to false since the squirrel is no longer hungry. Finally, we'll write an else statement. If the squirrel has acorns and is not hungry, it will run around aimlessly, and it will become hungry after doing so. There are a few things to note about if, else, if, and else blocks. First, if and else if blocks will only run if their condition is met. However, else blocks will run any time that no conditions in the if and else if statements are met. Next, is about the combination of if, if, else, if, and else blocks. Each of these types of statements must start with an if block. However, 
else if and else blocks are not required. If we do desire an else if block, we can have as many as we want, ranging from zero to infinity. Else blocks are also completely optional, but we can only have one else block per if statement. Else if blocks are not required in order to have an else block in the code. The last thing to note is that if else if and else blocks will only run the first block of code where the condition is met. For example, if the squirrel is hungry but also does not have acorns, the code will send the squirrel to go find an acorn and will never even check to see if the squirrel is hungry because it already ran this first block of code. Now it is time to run our method. Let's go back into the main.java file and create a new squirrel named Steve who is hungry and has two acorns. The new keyword tells the compiler that it needs to call the constructor. That's why we must use it whenever we create a new object. Now we can call the act method on Steve a couple of times. Now let's run the code and see what it outputs. First, Steve ate an acorn because he was hungry and had acorns. So first the code checked to make sure he had acorns and then it decided that since he was hungry, he should eat one. Then Steve had acorns, was not hungry, so he ran the else block of code and ran around aimlessly. This made him hungry. Now Steve had one acorn and he was hungry. So once again, he ate an acorn. Now the block of code ran again and Steve had no acorns. So it ran the, else, it, the if block of code and Steve went out and found an acorn. Steve was not yet hungry though, so now that he had an acorn, was not hungry. He ran around aimlessly, that made him hungry. So now he had an acorn, and his hungry was true, so he ate an acorn. You may also have noticed that it seems a little odd that we had to copy-paste this method a few times. It certainly is, and that's why we'll go into the for loop in our next video. Finally, I have one last thing to show you, and that is the idea of having multiple constructors. We can have as many constructors as, as we want in a class. For example, maybe we just want a constructor that only takes in the squirrel's name. We do something very similar to the first constructor we wrote, but this time we only have a parameter for the name and we will automatically set the number of acorns to zero and is hungry to false. If we were to create a second squirrel called Scott and only pass his name into the constructor, it would run this constructor right here that only takes the name. Well, Steve, since he has passed other parameters, will still run this particular constructor. All right, that's all for today. I hope you guys now have a solid understanding of constructors and if else, if else statements. Thank you so much for watching.